teams in the Sun Belt Conference meet up today in San Marcos, Texas, as the Texas State Bobcats, winners of five straight, and Louisiana Raging Cajuns, winners of three in a row, face off for the third time this season. On ESPN Plus, I'm Brent Freeman alongside Suzanne Fox. Suzanne, a big reason behind Texas State's recent success has been the stellar play from the senior out of Jersey City, New Jersey, Isaiah Small. He has been playing lights out, Brent. Isaiah Small is such a tough matchup as he can beat you from the three or in the paint. His ability to stretch the defense opens up the driving lanes for his teammates and makes the Bobcat offense explosive. Now you figure at times today and throughout the week and Small will get matched up against Louisiana's Theo Akuba, who's been one of the best rim protectors in the country. Yeah, on the flip side, as you mentioned, Theo Akuba, he is a paint enforcer. His length and athleticism allows his teammates to gamble on defense on the perimeter. His blocks lead to easy transition buckets for the Raging Cajuns. You see that wingspan, seven feet, six inches. I'll give you a comparison. That's the same wingspan length of Anthony Davis of the Los Angeles Lakers. That's just crazy. He is going to change some of the things that the Bobcats can do on offense but because of his athleticism and his ability to protect the rim. And so that does change some things on the offensive end. Now, Texas State is coming off of a weekend sweep of ULM. As a result, Texas State has now won five straight, and they're now ranked 19th in the latest mid-major poll. This Bobcat team has been red hot since a stunning loss to Our Lady of the Lake out of NAIA. They've won eight of their past nine. The only loss was the overtime defeat in the Sun Belt opener to these Ragin' Cajuns. Yeah, the Bobcats have really locked in on the road. You know, they've been on the road for quite a while, and we'll talk about that more throughout the broadcast. But these student athletes have locked in on the defense, have bought into what Coach TJ is selling, and have really put the W's on the board. Yep, again, those five wins, as Suzanne alluded to, all coming on the road in conference play. The Bobcats are one of just two teams in the nation with seven road wins this season. So tonight, playing at home for the first time, since December the 15th as the Cajuns, the Uakuba, starts to scoring with a dunk inside. The Bobcats also looking for their sixth straight win in conference play. They have done that just once over the past 18 years. And the defense of the Bobcats is going to have to improve. You can't help up. The post player, Alonze Sule, helped up the line. That's an easy dump off and dunk for Akuba. It'll be a long night for Texas State if they don't continue to contain the basketball on the perimeter. Let's present to you now the story of Louisiana. The Ragin' Cajuns are coming off of a weekend sweep of Arkansas State back home at Lafayette. They won game one last Friday, 81-68. Won game two, a closer margin, 77-74 over the Red Wolves. The combo of Cedric Russell and Theo Akuba played really well last week, combining for 77 points in the series. But we should know that this weekend, the Cajuns are without a pretty important person, their head coach, Bob Marlin, who tested positive for the COVID-19 virus back on Sunday. And you see what he's accomplished in his career in Louisiana. The wins and losses do go to his record, even though he's not here. So if the Cajuns win tonight, it will be the 200th in his career. Only two other coaches in program history have done that. A one-time Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year, Again, the Cajuns without their leader this weekend. And I've known Bob Marlin for a long time, back to his Sun Belt days when I was the coach here at Texas State and he was at Sam Houston. He's a great guy and a phenomenal basketball coach. I know the Raging Cajuns will miss him on the sidelines, but fortunately they have a veteran staff that have worked with Coach Marlin for numerous years to sort of take over the reins for tonight in this weekend series. Good head fake by Sule. He'll go to the free throw line for a pair. Should note, the Cajuns, those wins over Arkansas State last week, they were the 10th and 11th games the Cajuns have played at home this year. They've played just three true road games this season, but tonight is the first of a four-game road swing. Yeah, and it's a good sign there, back to the court action of Sule getting a foul. He's going to need to establish some type of presence in the paint to offset Akuba. Akuba is such a great defender. Sule's got to take it at him, make him guard, and the best outcome for the Bobcats is to get some fouls on him and put him on the bench. Just saw Terrence Johnson in the interim season. 
here at Texas State had a chance to visit with Coach Johnson earlier this week. Team is, again, playing really well, and he noted that their comfort level has increased, and with that, the winds have been piling up. Russell, that's a corner three for Cedric Russell. Early 5-1 lead here for the Raging Cajuns. Yeah, again, each team red hot and trying to extend winning streaks here today. The Bobcats, again, have only won six straight conference games once in the last 18 years. And out of the gates tonight, really, uh, the Raging Cajuns are really executing well on the offensive end. Texas State is yet to get on track in some kind of flow and rhythm on the offensive end. Opposite corner for Russell, off target. Harrell the rebound for the Bobcats, who have yet to get a field goal tonight. Good handles there from Harrell. Inside small, matched up against Akuba, and he travels. And I think the threat of Akuba's defense made Small hesitate there on the attack of the basket. Yeah, he's going to make you think twice. I mean, he's a dominating presence in the interior, and it's, it's hard to put that into statistical numbers. But you see that guy in there, they know he, they go in there, they throw it up, he can smack it back at him. And so it does make you think twice. And again, you have some travels and some different things are going to happen because of his pre paint presence. Duque turns it over, looking for a backdoor pass to Malik Wilson. Turnover is going to tell a big story in this game. That was one of the big keys that Terrence Johnson had for Texas State. That and rebound going to yeah. play a very big role this weekend. Yeah, both those things. Texas State has to do a great job controlling the glass. The Raging Cajuns really do a good job attacking the offense and defensive glass. And especially, you've got to keep Akuba and you've got to keep Duque off of the glass. Asbury the miss. Small comes away with the rebound and flushes it down. Small had some big games against the Cajuns four weeks ago when they hooked up at Lafayette, including 24 points in the series opener. Scored 42 over that weekend, shooting 79% from the floor. Yeah, that, that's probably the biggest, most impressive thing to me about Small is he's taking quality shots. And when you take quality shots and you hit the percentage he's hitting, good things are going to happen for him and for the Bobcats. Shot locked out of four. Gay puts it up, banks it in over Isaiah Small. How about that shot from Duguay, the senior out of Senegal, just a 17% three-point shooter before that hit. And again, it counts off the glass. Was a, I'm not sure he called backboard on that one, Brant, but it still counts as three. Inside Sule against Takuba. Draws a double team, finds a shooter. Adams off of the three, gay the rebound. Here comes Louisiana. Bray and AU to the rack. Couldn't finish, and the Bobcats will get it back. Cajuns on top early in San Marcos, eight to three. next home game by getting your tickets online at txtbobcats.com today. If you have a favorite social media platform, Texas State Athletics is on it. From Twitter to Facebook, Instagram to YouTube, and now Texas State Athletics coaches, student athletes, and spirit groups are there. Connect with the Bobcats by searching at TX State Bobcats on your favorite social media channel and enjoy the unique content that only the Texas State Bobcats can deliver. To see a list of all Texas State Athletics personalities on social media, visit TXST.com and search social accounts. Texas State Athletics social media stay connected hey kids for only $35 you could be attending all Texas State home games ask your parents about signing up for the Bobcat Kids Club for this low price you get a football season ticket free admission to all other sports Kids Club t-shirt and membership card an autographed picture from Boco and so much more sign up at txtbobcast.com or call 512-245-2272 when you get home sign up for the Bobcats Kid Club the last time these two locked horns in Lafayette four weeks ago, the Cajuns won a thriller in the opener in overtime. Big game for Devin Butts, 22 points for Louisiana. 
for the Bobcats answered back in day two the following night. A 71-59 win over the Raging Cajuns at the Cajun Dome. You look at the all-time series tonight. There's the 19th all-time meeting. The Cajuns have the edge, yes, but the Bobcats have gotten the better of Louisiana in recent years, winning four out of the past five. Yeah, I think the fans are going to be in for two really good ball games this weekend here between these two programs. The two, then the Cajun Dome. Both of those games were nip and tuck, really good ball games, and just came down to critical plays down the stretch. You have to give Louisiana a ton of credit. In game one, they trailed by 10 with 9.38 to go in the second half. Claw their way back to force overtime and again won it as it took the conference opener. But the Bobcats have not lost a game since. Yeah, and the defense, again, that last play down there is really dominating by the Raging Cajuns. They have guys with such great length around the rim. It's going to be hard for the perimeter players to get up there and be able to put anything off the glass and score. A Cajun turnover. That's their second. And, again, I go back to the conversation we had with Terrence Johnson earlier this week, and he said taking care of the basketball for both teams is going to be so critical, very paramount to winning this weekend. Especially when you talk about turning the ball over in live ball situations to Louisiana. Malik Wilson does a phenomenal job in forcing those mistakes, and the Cajuns will make you pay. Yeah, they really do. And, and one of the advantages the Cajuns have with a Kuba on the floor is the guards, the perimeter folks, can take a little more gamble because they know behind them they have a really good line of defense. And so that's how they get a little more steals maybe than the average team. But they, Louisiana wants to play in transition. They want to get easy baskets off of steals, offensive rebounds, and in transition. Sule, the last basket for Texas State. Here's a three from Wilson. Wheels out. Adams fights for the rebound against Isaiah Richards, who is called for the foul for Louisiana. A really good rebound there by Adams and, and the guards. All five Bobcats have to crash the boards against this team to have a chance to have an, e -bound, an even rebounding margin. They're that good of a rebounding team. Small. Off from the three. Wilson the rebound for Louisiana. The reigning Sunbelt Conference freshman of the year. Loses it. Or Duguay loses it. Adams has to steal for Texas State. Sloppy play for the Cajuns as of late. Here's Soule going to work inside. Can't finish, but more free throws coming up for Alonzo Soule, the junior out of Houston, Texas, a player who didn't begin playing the game until his sophomore year in high school when Terrence Johnson recruited him to Texas State. He'd been playing the game for just two years. And when he recruited him here to Texas State, mom and dad actually had some differing opinions there. After the recruiting visit, Sule's mother, Basima, actually wanted Sule to go to the Colorado School of Mines to pursue his education. Sule's best friend, J.J. Chandler, who now plays at Texas A&M, the two of them played with one another at Katie Cinco Ranch High School. His father coached along Terrence Johnson at Texas Pro, an AAU program. And Chandler's father called Terrence Johnson telling him that his son JJ came to him crying that Alonzo so badly wanted to play Division I basketball. Could you please talk to mom and have her reconsider? Terrence Johnson and Pasima Sule had a two hour conversation that night. She still wasn't convinced. He called her again the next day. They spoke for another hour, and lo and behold, here he is now playing for the Bobcats. I know Coach TJ is excited that he's here. And again, when he came in, as you mentioned, Brant, that he was redshirted his first year to give him more time to develop. And again, that's going to pay dividends for the Bobcats in his junior and senior campaigns. And by the way, mom has been just fine with the decision because Sule's academics have not been affected, a GPA over three, while also succeeding on the court. Eight, six Cajuns on top, a little more than seven minutes in. Kind of sloppy basketball right now from both teams. They are a combined 5 of 21 from the floor. Davis to miss three. Rebound, Louisiana. And, and again, this pace favors more the Raging Cajuns because they want to play 94 feet. They go a little deeper than the Bobcats do on the bench. They play 9 to 11 guys. Texas State, one of the other keys that Coach TJ had was 
they need to control the tempo of the ball game. Malik Wilson with the basket there for the Raging Cajuns. Wilson's first bucket today had a double-double. The first time these two met back in January 1st, 21 points, 11 rebounds. Quinn Scott, that three-pointer is off. Caesar has the rebound. Bobcats 0-7 from deep. This for a team who's been scorching hot from the outside in conference plays. Harrell hits the floater. The Bobcats are shooting 48% from beyond the arc in conference play, up to 23rd nationally in three-point shooting now. Yeah, and I, I think one of the things Coach TJ would say at this point of the game is we can't settle for three-point shots. You notice the last few possessions down for Texas State has been quick threes. You've got to make the defense of the Raging Cajuns work and get three-pointers where your feet are set and uncontested. Free throws coming up for Cedric Russell when we return from San Marcos. next home game by getting your tickets online at tx3bobcats.com today. Again, this is game one of this weekend, but really game three of this season-long series. Suzanne, what keys are there for both teams heading into this second series matchup? Yeah, we sort of talked about it a little bit, Brent. You know, Louisiana likes to play in transition. They want to get easy shots on transition, off blocks from Okubo, run outs, uh, steals, offensive rebounds. They want to pressure the ball and they want to limit the touches of Small and Asbury because they've been playing so well. For Texas State, they've got to control the pace of play. Louisiana wants to run. Texas State's got to slow the game down some. They've got to control the glass, one and done, especially on the defensive glass. And then last is decision-making. They can't have live ball turnovers. They've got to take care of the ball and make the Raging Canyons earn every basket. Out of the timeout, Cedric Russell to the free throw line. <coughs> Senior out of Alexandria, Louisiana, preseason third team, all Sunbelt Conference selection. Had a big game in this building a couple of years ago, put up 25 against Texas State, 20 coming in the second half. Here misses both free throws for a 77% foul shooter. And again, Texas State is still, in my mind, Brent, hasn't really got into a good offensive rhythm on the offensive end. I know we talked about during the break that half of their shots have been threes. I don't think that's what Coach TJ wants to see. Threes are good when you get it off screens, off uh, penetrate and pitch, and things where players get their feet set. Some of the threes the Bobcats have been taking have been highly contested. The buzzer went off, but the shot from Adams clearly hit the rim. Doesn't matter. The ball goes back to Louisiana. If you look back at the first two games at the Cajun Dome, and the stat that really stood out was points in the paint. The Bobcats hey, had a decided advantage there. In fact, nearly about half of the points they scored over the two games came in the paint. Again, percentages. You're going to get fouled more if you're in the paint. Your percentage of making the shot's going to go up in the paint versus taking a contested three-point shot. And again, the Bobcats have to be more intentional on the offensive end. You also see a big number, free throws. The Cajuns took 18 more than Texas State, cashed in on all but six of them. Louisiana did a really good job of finding ways to get to the foul line. Yeah, and again, that, that comes with their interior play. They've got two guards that are all conference caliber in Russell and Wilson that can put the ball on the deck and draw fouls. And so 
you know, this is a loaded Raging Cajun team. Texas State has got to stick to play the game they, the way they want to play it to be successful. Moving screen, called against Texas State against Shelby Adams. That's Texas State's third turnover of the game halfway through this first half. Louisiana on top, 12 to eight. Again, the Cajuns playing just their fourth road game of the season. They're two and one of the road this year. This after going three and 12 outside of Lafayette a year ago. Look at the Bobcats though, at home, three and one this season, yes. Since this building was renovated three years ago, they are 29 and eight inside of Strand Arena. That's a three from Russell, his second from deep. Cajuns have their largest lead now at 15 to eight on top by seven. Man, Russell is a tough matchup. He's a three level scorer, Brandt. He can hit the three, the mid range and get to the rim. You know, you've got to stay on him. You've got to try to contain him and not let him have a big blowout game today. Outside Asbury on the drive, lost it off his leg. But they're going to say last touch by Tyler Harper, Louisiana. The Bobcats will keep it. So Russell again, the top three-point shooter on this Cajun basketball team at 37%. And he came from a powerhouse program in the state of Louisiana, Peabody Magnet. Three-star recruit, and he has been an awfully impressive player for the Cajuns throughout his career. Currently the third league scorer in the Sun Belt. Sule outside Harrell. Did he get it off in time? He did not. 30-second shot clock violation, Texas State. And the Bobcats, who have been so good offensively in the first six Sun Belt Conference games, out of sorts right now. Yeah, they are. They're not They're not shooting the ball really well. They're getting a little bit better, I see, at playing a little inside-out basketball. The last couple possessions, or that last possession in particular, they got the ball into Sule, kicked it back out. But they didn't go to that until so late in the shot clock, Grant. They had a shot clock violation. Um, they've just got to continue to be diligent and intentional on the offensive end. Texas State, 3 of 14 from the floor. The last time they faced the Cajuns, they shot a season best 60% from the floor. Off the miss three. Asbury the rebound. Bobcast trying to get some offense going. Davis finds Harrell outside. Another miss from beyond the arc for the Bobcats. 0 oh, of 8 from deep to start the game. Russell the floater. And the battle for the boards leads to a tie-up. And Texas State will get it back off of the possession arrow. Marlon Davis is battling down there for the basketball and rebounds. And again, some of the things that I think Texas State has really done well that may have went under the radar this season has been their guards rebounding. You know, you've got Shelby Adams, Asbury, Marlon Davis. Several of these guys have done a, a hard hat of a job really hitting the glass and helping out Small and Sule and the other inside guys. Should note, by the way, the college basketball world suffered a big loss earlier today. The passing of legendary coach Don Chaney at the age of 89, of course, was extremely successful at Temple University in Philadelphia. Guided the Owls to 17 NCAA tournament appearances and was inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006. And again, that foul on the on the floor there, Brent, is a good sign for the Bobcats. They're now in the one and one for the remainder, 8-18 of the first half. And again, that's good. Even though they've not been shooting the ball well, they've done enough attacking with Sule, with Mason Harrell, and other guys to get themselves into the one and one. Harrell, the fifth best foul shooter in the Sun Belt, 82%. Junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, from. Carl Albert High School, where he was named as the Gatorade Player of the Year in Oklahoma. One of two for the line. Small and Gordon battling for it, and the ball will go stay on this end. And that's a, an, an unforced turnover there by the Raging Cajuns. The Bobcats are going to get on the top side of that with a free possession. And again, this is one of those like an offensive rebounder still. They need to get some points out of it. Gordon on the switch, matched up against Terrell. Coming up at eight minutes to go in the first half. Now Harrell against Richards, shot clock to six. Davis open from the outside. There's just a lid of the basket right now for the Bobcats and three-point shots, and it leads to a timeout on the floor. 
Texas State stuck on nine points as the Cajuns lead by six at Strand Arena. Shining from the hill, eternally committed to truth and the flow of knowledge, turning dreams into action, action into life, life into achievement. In the face of change and challenge, we are fierce. We inspire, we innovate, we become. The digital home field for all of Texas State Bobcats is TXST.com. Bookmark this page so you'll have easy access to the latest news, scores, highlights, and live event coverage links. Plus, see in-depth stories, up-to-date conference standings, purchase game tickets, access social media content, and enjoy a wealth of feature content that will keep you entertained for hours, all from the comfort of your own home. Get started now by heading to TXST.com, your official digital home for Texas State Athletics. next home game by getting your tickets online at txtbobcats.com today. Three years ago, Louisiana won 27 games in their first Sunbelt Conference Championship since 2000. They had a drop off the year after, but then an even further dip the following year. Last season, only winning 14 games, finishing in a tie. Great place in the Sunbelt Conference, but Suzanne, if you look closer at the story of the Cajuns a season ago, this team was marred by injury last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to even put into words the number of in in injuries, pardon me, Brant, that the Raging Cajuns had. I mean, you can see here by the graphic, coaches can coach, but you got to have the players to go out there and play the game. And with this number of injuries last year, it was definitely going to affect in the win-loss column. And there are three players right now not available to the Cajuns because of injury. Trajan Wesley, Kobe Julian, and DeRay Cad uh, Cadwell all out right now due to injury. And that's one of the things that's hard for coaches. You have to adapt to a lot of things coaching these young men, but having injuries that are unanticipated, especially by key guys, changes the dynamic of your season. So Richards hung on the rim there a little bit enough for the ball to fall through. Bobcat Bench, I think, may have been looking for Offensive goaltending or rim interference. Instead, we play on. Cajuns on top, 17 to nine. Davis inside Sule couldn't handle the pass. Gathers and finishes. Nice little pass there by Marlon Davis to Sule. And again, the same concept. When guards break down their defender and the post defense has to step up, that's going to always open up the bucket for a flush. Sule, six points so far today. Scored just eight in the two games combined in Lafayette. Richard strong on the offensive rebound following Sule's block and a chance for a chance for a three-point play. And that was an awesome play by Richards. Really gets the ball here. He's fighting tooth and nail all the way. Strong finish with the left hand. And uh, there was nothing that Asbury could do but just to hit him on the arm or let him have it. Richards, a freshman, has come a long way to play basketball. And Lafayette, born in Brooklyn, New York, played high school basketball at the Commonwealth Academy, Massachusetts. Can't complete the three-point play. Eight-point Cajun lead. Ties for the largest so far here in game one of this weekend series. Game three between these two this season. Asbury off the glass, cuts the lead, back down to six. Really nice cut there by Asbury off of a flex screen and got a really easy look at the bucket. That hopefully for the Bobcat fans will get Asbury going a little bit. Six and a half to go. Louisiana playing for its fourth consecutive win. Texas State at sixth. Here's Gay, the crossover, the fade away, short. Good handles there for big man, huh? He does. He really has a really good skill set. And again, I know the Raging Cajuns were glad to have him back tonight for this top tier matchup in the West since he didn't play in the first matchup. Sule gets a better of Isaiah Richards there again. Sule having 
Pretty good first half for Texas State. Eight of the Bobcats, 15 points. Six minutes to go. It's a four-point Louisiana lead. Yeah, and that's, that's a big key is Sule really having a big game. They need an interior presence against these raging Cajuns. Eight points so far again for Sule. Rest of the team, seven points combined. Turnover against the Raging Cajuns. Offensive foul against Richards. Louisiana's fourth turnover. And the Bobcats can now make it a one possession game. Again, a lot of subs back in for Louisiana. Russell, Akuba, back into the game along with Malik Wilson. And that's, that's one of the advantages that the Raging Cajuns have. They have a really deep bench. They're used to playing 9 to 11 guys every night out. And so it's not this is not a, uh, an anomaly that they're rotating guys in and out. They want to keep them fresh, especially playing these back-to-back -back series. And look at the Cajun bench again, minus Bob Marlin, tested positive for COVID-19 this past Sunday, did not make the trip. Terrence Johnson for Texas State. Man, he has done a whale of a job this year, Brand. Mm -hmm. TJ has coached his tail off thus far. The guys have bought in to what he's selling, and uh, he's just done a great job for the Bobcats. You know, you look at Texas State's turnaround. After six games this season, they were 3-3, three and three, and, of course, the sixth of those games was that stunning loss to Our Lady of the Lake. They've been a much different team since then. Yeah, they really have, and I, and I think – they on the road really helped them and you know I know when I was coaching Brant when you're on the road road you're in like a controlled environment you know there's nothing really but basketball and that's all you're thinking you're in the hotel and all you're doing is film study prep for the game and you really have those guys in a quarantined environment and I think coach TJ and the staff and the guys have really had some time to bond and uh, you can see the dividends is paying for them on the floor. Well he said after that loss to our lady of the lake in particular the players, the staff had what he called a come to Jesus meeting. And they got their act together. Won the very first game after that, two nights later against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Went on the road into Denver, won both games of the Pioneer Challenge. And they've since started Sunbelt play five and one. And it is, sometimes you have to have those come to Jesus moments with your team. And at that point, you've got two roads. One could be a good road and one could be a bad road. The Bobcats have chosen a good road. They've come together, and I think the biggest thing is they've more clearly defined their roles. Mm -hmm. Who does what on offense? Who does what on defense? Who's going to be more of a vocal leader? And I think the guys are more uh, moving into those roles and having more comfort with them, and I think that's led to the success on the floor. Dugay at the foul line. He did not play in the series against Texas State earlier this month because of COVID protocol. Good on the first free throw. A 56% foul shooter splits the pair. Five-point Cajun lead, approaching five to go in the first half. Top two teams in the Sun Belt's West Division. Bobcats a one-game lead over Louisiana for first. Adams a drive and can't finish. Here comes Louisiana. Floater, Wilson spins in. And that is really where Louisiana thrives is in transition. You saw how quickly they got the ball from one end of the floor to the other and then how Wilson can really be slicey dicey in the lane and got an easy layup. Adams and a blocking foul. Called here against Malik Wilson, 19 foul against Louisiana. The one and one coming up now for Texas State. Shelby Adams the one going to the foul line. He's gotten a lot more opportunities so far this season. You guys look back at the last basket by Malik Wilson. Really talented player in transition. He's tough to stop. Averaging 14 a game. And here's Adams, who again has had a resurgent senior season. He really has. You know, he had limit, got limited minutes his first three years, and a lot of that's because he was playing behind, I know, some guy named Nigel Pearson, you know. <laughs> Uh, the all-time leading scorer, and so now he's getting more opportunities to showcase his game, and I think he just has to play within himself. You know, I, I don't classify him as a tremendous three-point shooter. He's a great defender. He's a good team guy, role player, 
but he can hit the mid-range and give you some real critical buckets down the stretch. You said it. He's not a big three-point shooter. He's made just three this season, but one of those was the game-tying three. They sent the game at overtime at Lafayette earlier this month. Well, the ball was in his hands with a few ticks left, and sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> AU with a shot clocked out of five. And here's Gay. Spins, fades, and can't connect. Here's Marlon Davis now for Texas State. Up ahead, Small in traffic, lays it in. Tough basket, Isaiah Small against Duguay. Man, that was a great play by Isaiah Small. For a big man to be able to catch the ball in transition in that narrow gap, pick it up and finish at the rim, that's an incredible play by Small. Under four to go in a four-point game. The pull-up is good. Cedric Russell, the basket, eight and a half for Russell. Back out his six-point Cajun lead. It's a great matchup for you guys who are looking for something to watch, not just the basketball, is if you watch Gay and Isaiah Small, those two guys are battling right now. Harrell for three. Bobcats ice cold for the outside. 0 of 10 shooting threes. Here in the game's first 16 plus minutes. The Cajuns have their best five on the floor right now, leading by six. Wilson trying to go glass, and Harrell secures the rebound. Yeah, Wilson was trying to take the mismatch of his height over Harrell, put him on the block and see if he could get a post move. Mason Harrell did a nice job of bumping him out, keeping him wide off the lane line. Here's Small against Gay. Akuba the block. That's what he does best, Theo Akuba. Protecting the rim, Cajuns right now protecting a six-point lead. And again, they've slowed it down a little bit. You've got about two and a half minutes left right before the half. Both teams need to finish out strong. Russell rises, fires, can't hit. A foul against Texas State will lead to free throws for the Cajuns when we return. Louisiana on top late in the first half in San Marcos. next home game by getting your tickets online at tx3bobcats.com today. Here on ESPN Plus, we stay topical. And of course, one of the big topics this week around the country has been stock trading, namely for companies like GameStop and AMC. Well, because of that, we thought we'd take our own look at the Sunbelt Conference stock market, who we buy and who we sell it. Right now, if you're Texas State, you got to buy it on the Bobcats. They won five straight. Appalachian State right now playing really well in the East. Louisiana's won three straight. You got to buy on those three. If you're selling right now, well, Little Rock was picked to win the Sun Belt Conference this season, and the Trojans have struggled so far in conference play, sitting at just four and four at 500. Georgia State, the Panthers below 500 in Sun Belt play. They were picked to win the East, and the Troy Trojans have dropped five in a row. You got to sell on Troy right now. Man, Brand, I think I, I need to give you some money and let you invest for me because I like your picks on the Sunbelt Stock Watch. Well, hopefully the apps will let me do that. <laughs> another topic of conversation for another day. Yeah. <laughs> right now, you're buying a Cajun stock in this game, Louisiana, on top 24 to 18, and free throws coming up for the Cajuns as well. Yeah, and I, 
and again, this is such a, and I, I know we've talked about it, Brant, such a unique season with the COVID, playing back-to-back -back games, only playing the teams on the West. I mean, there's just so many variables that you don't usually deal with in a season. And you see the impact that the pandemic has had this year in college basketball. More than 1,200 games have either been canceled or postponed to this point. The season began in November. I mean, that is just incredible. More than 100 this week alone in college basketball. One of note, currently the Big 12 SEC Challenge is going on. There was a big matchup between Kentucky and, and uh, Texas on tap for today in Austin. That game has been canceled because of COVID issues with the Wildcats. Both yeah. free throws good for Akuba, eight-point Cajun lead. Yeah, I know for you and I, we had a two-week span here in San Marcos, no games. Mm -hmm. We missed a, a men's set of games and a women's set of games. And again, you just don't know week to week if you're gonna get to play. So every time you get that opportunity, you wanna ma maximize, your, maximize it. The Georgia State South Alabama series has also been impacted because of COVID. That series has been postponed. Shot clock under 10. Adams the drive, the floater over Akuba. Boy, the degree of difficulty on that shot against that shot blocker off the charts. Yeah, I'd give that a 9.5, Brand, as far as difficulty there. It's a great shot by Adams. Here's Butts. Puts it in from outside. Devin Butts, a sophomore out of Macon, Georgia, transfer out of Mississippi State. Again, lit the Bobcats up for 22 points and the conference opener back in January 1st and hits the three-pointer to put the Cajuns on top by nine. Yeah, he was what I would call a rain or shine in that series against Texas State. He had 22 the first night, then the second night. He went 0 for 7 and didn't score. Brent Scott hits the contested jumper over Jacoby Gordon. The Bobcats offensively have been playing a lot better over the past five, six minutes, but now defensively not getting the stops they got earlier. Yeah, and that credit, some of that has to go to the Raging Cajuns. This is a really talented offensive team that Coach Marlin has assembled. Their bigs are incredible inside with Akuba and Dugay. He's a, he's a tough matchup. And then they've got two all-conference guards outside with Russell and Wilson. I mean, this is a very talented offensively uh, team for the Raging Cajuns put on the floor. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Jacoby Gordon will go to the free throw line. Another first year transfer, Minson Butts from Mississippi State. Gordon coming by way of Cal. The Cajuns with three D1 Power 5 transfers, or three D1 transfers, I should say, two out of the Power 5 that got their eligibility in year one. Yeah, and that's just incredible to bring that type of experience into a lineup. And then you throw in there Brian A.U., who has played with Caleb Asbury at Ranger Junior College. He was a conference player of the year. I mean, they had a heck of a recruiting class. Throw in Tyler Harper, who we haven't talked a lot about as well. Harper for Louisiana, a four-star recruit, the sixth-ranked player out of the state of California. He intended to go to prep school this fall as Harold takes a hard spill, helped up by his teammates. Well, Harper, because of COVID, decided to go ahead and pursue college and play for the team he had committed to. Louisiana got clearance for the NCAA early entry and was on campus and playing for Louisiana by mid-December. Yeah, and he's uh, quite an addition for him. Super talented guy. I mean, uber athletic, and he, he factored in to some of those earlier games, and so I think he's going to be somebody that's going to continue to develop and grow throughout the Sun Belt season. Free throw for Mason Harrell has four points here in the first half. Connects on both. Seven-point Cajun lead, 49 seconds to go. And, you know, it's one of those things, if you're a Texas State fan, it's a seven-point uh, difference in the game, but as poorly as the Bobcats have shot from the three, you almost sort of, you know, shake your hands and think, man, that's okay if, if we miss that many three-point three point attempts. Wilson misses an open look at three. Shot clock is off. Bobcats could hold for the final shot if they choose. And a timeout taken by Terrence Johnson to discuss this possession with 19.8 seconds to go. 
I'll tell you what, we're about a month into the Sunbelt Conference play now. Let's take a look at some of the headlines around the Sunbelt Conference. Devontae Jones for Coastal Carolina for the second time this season named Sunbelt Player of the Week. Averaged more than 23 points a game with a sweep of Troy last week. Five teams now ranked in College Insiders mid-major top 25. Texas State 19th, Louisiana 21st. And again, mentioned this not long ago, no games in Atlanta this weekend between South Alabama and Georgia State due to COVID. And this is now the fifth weekend of conference play. And in only two of them have there been a full allotment of games. Yeah, and I think that's going to continue, Brant. You know, as much as, you know, the, the country is trying to get the vaccinations and all the testing and everything, you know, I think we're still going to deal with this throughout the rest of the basketball season. Out of the timeout. Down to the final 10 seconds. Bobcats looking for a quality possession in the first half. Outside Adams, back to Harrow for an open three. Another miss from the outside, and that will end the first half. So the Raging Cajuns on top, 31-24, to as they look to pick up their fourth win in a row. Big first half for Cedric Russell. Led all Cajun scores with eight points and a couple from the outside as well. And his Rachel Cajuns hold the lead in San Marcos 31 24 on ESPN. I've always enjoyed basketball. You know, when I was little, each time we used to play outside, you know, go around when I was younger. But I really didn't start playing uh, organized basketball until like my junior year of high school. So um, that's really when I started playing like team basketball. So at first, you know, just getting used to the organized aspect of it, because I was just used to just playing, you know, with my friends, like out in the backyard, just, you know, playing like just casually. But it was, it was cool though. I mean, it was nice adjustment.
It's the bonds I make with my teammates, really, just bonds I make and just playing and practicing with them every single day. Uh, I just, I really enjoy that aspect of it. When I'm not playing basketball, man, well, if school's going on, I'm doing schoolwork. Schoolwork's not going on, I'm just chilling with my friends. Uh, uh, you know, not, nothing really too much, you know. Play, get on that 2K a little bit too. <laughs> my hidden talent, I mean, I think I can dance a little bit. That's probably a hidden talent of mine. <laughs> Life popular demand it is end to end as we visit with members of Texas State Athletics and today our guest is interim head men's basketball coach Terrence Johnson I'm Brain Freeman as we take you from one end of the Strand Arena floor to the other talking Bobcat basketball coach let's start our journey and talk about the journey that, that this program has taken since March 11th of last year, that's when the college basketball season came to a screeching halt. That was the final game that you played last season. Again, the pandemic ceased everything for you. But now here we are in the middle of a pandemic and you're trying to get through a season. Just how challenging has that been? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last year it was it was certainly devastating for our guys to end the season like that. But uh, this year we've been working through it all off season. So we're a little bit more prepared for what the reality of it is. Um, just certainly our guys have been staying focused and understanding how to control what they can control. So I've been really, really proud of the way our guys been handling all, all of this. Now, while you're a first year head coach and the interim coach here, of course, a lot of experience at Texas State, five years as, his, as an assistant before becoming the interim head coach. What has been the biggest adjustment that you've had to make? I think the biggest adjustment is you go from making a suggestion every so often to making a decision every single day that impacts your program and every member of your program at the highest level. So I would say that that's probably the biggest adjustment. What have you learned the most about yourself here, here in year one on the job? Well, humility, certainly. Um, no, understanding that I don't know it all, that, that uh, you know, a good coach has a good staff and that, um, you know, certainly w winning games, you need good players. So understanding that I'm just a very small piece of this puzzle, but um, I do have a job to do every single day and I need to make sure that I lean on those who help me to be productive every single day. Your student athletes spoke very highly of you when you were the one selected to be the interim head coach. So they like you a lot. What do you like about them? Well, I love these guys. You know, I've, 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 um, I've been here longer than all of them, so I've seen them all grow. I uh, also had a hand in recruiting most of those guys, and I, I just appreciate their, their approach to the game. You know, these guys love the game. They, they're eager learners, and, um, and I think they're just good people and come from good families. So I think if you're going to start a program, you want to start a program with, like the, with guys like we have. Getting to know more about your background, you graduated, got your bachelor's degree from Southern University and got it in microbiology. So how do you go from potentially being a microbiologist to a basketball coach? Well, the good thing is that I don't have to wear a white lab coat. I said, but, you know, I think what I've learned the most is that where, 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 where there's a connection, the connection is in is anything that you're trying to prove to be scientific law. You don't try to prove it right. So I'm not trying to prove to these guys that I'm right all the time. Um, basically, in science, you try to prove it wrong. And if you can't prove it wrong, then it is right. So uh, if, we, if, we, if there's a better way of doing things in our program, then I'm all for it. So I just want to do whatever's right for the program and for the student athletes. Well, again, we've gone from one baseline to the other, from one end to the other, as we talk more about Texas State men's basketball with interim head coach Terrence Johnson. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Brendan, and for Texas State Athletics, I'm Brent Freeman. Eat them up. story when I first fell in love with basketball was when I was little. Football was my first love. So like one day my dad just threw me a basketball. He was like, yo. And I used to shoot underhand. So like every day my dad would bring me to the park early in the morning just to change my form. And that right there told you, I'm like, yeah. So I dedicated myself to that. My favorite part. So if you have a good game, like even if you don't have a good game, like, this the media afterwards, they ask you a couple questions. I just like coming in there. Like, every, like everything at Texas State is fun, but like, the media after the games, it's, I don't know, it's just fun, like. 
what motivates me is just the fun of it. I mean, my personality is just like to have fun whenever I can. The fans, just watching the little kids cheer for me. I love fans. I just, I love when little kids like come on the sideline and look at me. I just, be, I just, I just be having fun with them. That's the best part. At the half, Louisiana on top of Texas State, 31 to 24. You look at the big difference in the first half, outside shooting, the Cajuns had it, the Bobcats simply did not. Texas State, 0 of 11 from the outside. Louisiana made four first half three-pointers, two courtesy of Cedric Russell, one of them a banked in three from Duguay. It all counts. And Louisiana, again, has built a 31-24 lead as they look to take game three of this season-long four-game series. Cajuns halfway there, the lead at the half at Strand Arena, 31-24. Second half coming up after this on ESPN+. Plus.
two big numbers for the first half. Outside shooting and bench production. Cajuns at four threes, the Bobcats a donut in that category. Bench advantage plus seven for Louisiana. Their lead here at the start of the second half, seven, 31-24. Yeah, Brent, you sort of hit the nail on the head there. Texas State's bench has got to contribute, but more importantly for the Bobcats, they have got to be able to hit some of those three-point shots if they're going to continue to take them. I mean, you're looking at 11 of their 26 attempts were three-pointers. That's more than a third. And so it's just one of those things Texas State's got to be able to uh, get some dividends off the three-point attempts. And the thing is, not a lot of those threes were contested. They were good open looks for the most part for Texas State, but they wouldn't go down. Got a quick whistle here four seconds in. Yeah, they had a little bit of issue, I think, with the 30-second clock or the ah. clock. Something It was a timing issue. Understand that there is a clock issue right now in Jonesboro, so much so they've had to push back the start of the game between Arkansas State and UTA. And again, this is one, you know, a key possession for Texas State. You want to come out of the locker room and execute on the offensive end. And again, you couldn't ask for a better one there with Sule getting a touch deep in the paint. Little right-handed jump hook over Akuba. Sule was a player the Bobcats thought would take a leap this season after having such a strong finish to uh, his sophomore season a year ago including that explosion he had against Little Rock in a key game as Asbury flies in and throws it down. Bobcats getting out in transition. Back to Alonzo Sule. He's been kind of quiet this season, but he's having a really impressive game so far. First Bobcat into double figures. Man, and the good walk-up three for Small. Texas State is on a run. I would expect a timeout here from the Raging Cajuns, but no, they're gonna continue to play on. Texas State has came out inspired this second half. 7-0 run of the first minute here in the first half. Just like that, we're tied. Cajuns trying to weather the storm. A lot of dribbling here by Bray and AU. Shot clock to eight. AU inside to Gay. Backs down small, fades, connects, and puts the Cajuns back in front. Really nice possession by the Raging Cajuns. Gay got that deep post up on Small and had a really nice touch over the top. Bobcats looking to respond. Good start for them in the first minute of the second half. Akuba just gives Sule the long jumper. And the strategy pays off. You don't typically see Sule score a lot from outside the paint. Yep. That's not really what his, his skill set allows. He's more of an interior player. And um, again, he, he took the shot, missed it. And again, that just played right into the hands of the Raging Cajuns. And then Russell hits the floater. He's up to 10 points. Back out to a four point Louisiana lead. Here's Harrell on the switch picked up by Wilson, one of the best on ball defenders in the conference. Shot locked out of eights. Yeah, Wilson is a great on-ball defender, really quick hands. He can pick your pocket like we almost saw there in a heartbeat. So the Bobcats will get it back on the Cajun foul. Again, kind of a quiet first half for players like Caleb Asbury and Isaiah Small, but each making an immediate impact here in the first moments of the second half. They really are. That was an easy, here's a big dunk by Asbury, and the play before was where Isaiah Small lives in three-point line, just that walk-up trail three. He's going to hit a super high percentage if you leave him alone on that one. Nate Martin into the game now for Alonzo Sule. wonder if something's bothering Sule. I think he's being looked at right now on the bench, or at least Terrence Johnson's talking to him. Shot clock to three. Harrell's got to hurry, puts it up. Rebound, pinballs around, and finally saved by Wilson. Wilson in transition, lost the basketball, but Russell's right there, puts up a three, gained the rebound. Back into Wilson, good offense there from Louisiana, and the lead is back out to six. Yeah, and you see Soule's about to come in. Nate Martin, the freshman, has got to do a better job on the defensive glass at the other end. He just got ate up that last possession. Small on the drive. Jump pass to Asbury for a three. Caleb Asbury hits on the outside. And so the Bobcats have been two now from beyond the arc after not hitting any in the first half. 
Yeah, a little better shot selection, and then some of it's just, they're just hitting them. You know, you got to take them to make them, but the Bobcats, I think, have settled down. Defensively, they've got to really hit the glass on this end, and again, it's a lot of pressure on the freshman, Nate Martin, trying to keep Akuba off the glass. He's such a great rebounder. Foul against Caleb Asbury. And for Asbury, that is his third personal. Wilson to put back a one in for the Cajuns. Asbury three on the other. Asbury has now started every game since that stunning loss to Our Lady of the Lake. And the reason why that he started the first couple of games after that loss was an injury to Marlon Davis. And then Asbury just took off in terms of his level of play. We'll talk more about the story when we return as the Bobcats get the basketball back, trailing by three early on in the second half. How about the play of these two since Sunba Conference play started? Caleb Asbury and Isaiah Spall collectively averaging 29 points a game, shooting an unreal percentage from the outside. Small 77%, Asbury 52%. They've cooled off a little bit today. Those numbers aren't sustainable, Suzanne. But again, the 6-1 record, you can look to the play of Asbury and Small is a big reason why. Absolutely. You know, both those two guys have to be able to contribute on the offensive end. They have the skills. You know, Isaiah Small is such a tough matchup because he can stretch the floor, he can hit the three, he can put the ball on the deck. And then Asbury's a gifted shooter. And so for Texas State to be successful down the stretch and even tonight, they're going to have to be able to put up some numbers. I was getting into the story about Asbury. So, again, he started the first couple of games after that lost Our Lady of the Lake due to an injury to Marlon Davis. Davis and the staff saw just how well Asbury was playing. And when Marlon got healthy, he told the coaches, just keep me on the bench and keep starting Asbury. If it's broke, don't. if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and, that's, and that's part of the maturity that Coach TJ mentioned this team has made over the last month. They've started to understand their roles. They've settled into, you know, Marlon Davis has settled into coming off the bench, you know. And that's for him, when I say a sacrifice, he's a 50-year guy willing to say, hey, if that's what's best for the team so Asbury can get out there and get going on the offensive end for us, that's what I'm going to do. And that takes a lot of maturity by a team. Five minutes gone by in the second half. This last foul against Texas State, the second on Shelby Adams, second on the team, 20 on the, on the clock for Louisiana. 
Into Russell, who's working at a 10-point game. Looking for 13. Short on the three. Rebound saved by Davis into Small. I think Marlon Davis should have get two rebounds for that last one, man. He really had to make a play, saving the ball, falling out of bounds uh, to, keep, to keep the Bobcats with the ball. Shot blocked by Akuba. Sule trying to get it back to Harrell. Knocks it in. And the Bobcats have their first lead of the game on top, 38-37. And again, just persistence. These Bobcats are resilient and persistent, and they are just tough as nails. Great block there by Isaiah Small. Small, the Bobcats' top shot blocker, third of the Sun Belt Conference. All the talk about Theo Okuba. Well, Isaiah Small can do some rim protecting of his own. Now again, Akuba, yes, a phenomenal shot blocker, got that block against Alonzo Sule, but Sule heads up play, able to knock it free to Mason Harrell, who finishes on the jumper. Bobcats have their first lead. Cajun's trying to get it back. Shot clock is seven. Russell on the switch against Small. The blow by, the miss, and Sule has the rebound. Duguay pestering Sule in the backcourt. Ball goes off his leg, and Texas State will inbound it again. Yeah, this game is getting more and more physical, Brand, in the second half. Both teams are really, you can tell, they both want to, they really want to get this one under their belt. It's the third game of a four-game, quote, series, the second two games of this weekend. And, uh, you know, these are both the division leaders, and they want to stay in that spot. Kind of feels like an NBA playoff series yeah. in a way. Now the Oops Sule can't finish, gets it back, can't flip it in. Akuba loses it. A battle for the basketball. Bodies going crashing down to the floor. Boy, these two teams, a lot of want to right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when I said it was getting physical, and it's not chippy bad, this is teams battling. This is basketball. These are teams that are championship caliber teams that are putting it all on the line tonight, trying to get that next win in the league play. Again, the Bobcats hold a one-game lead over Louisiana for first place in the Sun Belt's West Division. Cajuns have not scored in more than three minutes. Bobcats right now in the middle of a 7-0 run. And then Butts travels to the basketball. Just a six turnover against Louisiana. And the Bobcats will get it back trying to extend this run of theirs. And now the Cajuns applying some pressure in the backcourt. Yeah, you know, again, you do that to change the tempo. You do that so you don't have to guard in the half court as much. And, you know, and they're also just going to make Texas State have to work. You know, again, we've talked about the Raging Cajuns have a lot more, have more depth or play more depth than Texas State does. Bobcat bench, just two points so far tonight. Caesar can't handle the pass. Saved by Adams after Small. Off from the three. Adams the rebound. Another offensive board. And the Bobcats can reset. Texas State is really working hard on the glass. They've been getting those 50-50 balls in the second half that they did not get in the first half. Harrell misses a step back. A lot of chances on that trip for Texas State. They come up empty. Louisiana is the second best rebounding team in the Sun Belt in terms of margin. The Bobcats are plus seven tonight as Russell drills one for the outside. They'll save foot on the line. It's a one-point Cajun lead. That ends a 7-0 run for Texas State. He is such a great scorer, Brant. Great pullback dribble. Got the separation from Marlon Davis and just was at Italy, a nice, easy 19-foot jumper. Out of bounds on the turnover from Marlon Davis. Louisiana gets it on Texas State's sixth turnover. Russell is a player who can get hot in a hurry. Again, he scored 25 in this building a couple of seasons ago. 20 coming in the second half. Third all-time in career three-pointers at Louisiana. His 12 points lead all scores so far here tonight. He scored 26 last Friday in the win over Arkansas State. Yeah, Texas State was able to contain him pretty well the first games, the first matchups when they were in the Cajun Dome. He had 14 and 11 in the two games, and 
that's a great job by Texas State because he is a prolific scorer. Last foul there against Texas State is the fourth personal against Caleb Asbury. He has to come out. That's a lot of offense for the Bobcats that's in foul trouble. Can't afford any more over the final 12 minutes. And he had just subbed in the game, Brent, literally probably 10 seconds ago. I mean, he just came in and got that fourth foul. And uh, as you mentioned, that's a definitely an offensive weapon that the Bobcats are going to be without for a pretty good amount of time this second half. 12 minutes left, probably can't go back to four or five minutes left and put him back in the game. Now to the free throw line, Tyler Harper, the freshman out of Norcross, Georgia, but played his high school basketball in California. Off on the first. Whether you're at the game or at home, there's no better way to support the Bobcats than with the latest gear. For all things maroon and gold, go to BobcatsShop.com. That's the place to go. BobcatsShop.com, the official online store of the Texas State Bobcats. Under 12 to go in the half. These two teams split the season, split the weekend series in Lafayette a few weeks ago. Adams turns it over. Butts to Wilson, and the Cajuns give it right back. Things are tight between the Bobcats and the Cajuns. Eight minutes gone by in the second half. Louisiana on top by two. Cedric Russell working on a dozen so far for Louisiana. His Cajuns on top at Texas State. Let's talk more about Malik Wilson for Louisiana, the reigning Sunbelt Conference freshman of the year, the number one ranked player in the state of Louisiana coming out of high school from Rayville High School in Rayville, Louisiana. Four-star recruit, preseason second team, all Sunbelt Conference. Wilson, six points, four boards so far here tonight. And again, maybe the biggest category for him is steals. 37 coming into the game this evening. That ranks ninth in the nation. And they get a turnover there by Shelby Adams. They, Texas State had broken the press and had a nice look there for Sule to possibly get an easy layup or dunk and just a mishandle of the pass. Again, big story for Texas State is that Caleb Asbury is on the bench with four personal fouls. You wonder at what point of the game Terrence Johnson will feel comfortable bringing him back in. In the corner, Gordon, the three, won't go. 
And the rebound finally to Shelby Adams for Texas State. Yeah, he's got to be really cautious bringing Asbury back too soon because of the matchup with the Cajuns. I mean, he's going to have to guard Russell or he had, could have to guard Wilson, and those guys are so tough to guard on the, on the defensive end. Bobcats have missed six straight from the floor. This after a hot start of the second half. Sule, a series of spin moves. Can't finish. Good defense from Richards. Now Richards posting up Sule. Draws a double team and then a foul. A reach in from Mason Harold, team's fifth. And for Harold, that's his third. And again, you don't want Harold to have to leave the floor. He is such the, the floor general for the Bobcats. He calms everybody down. He gets everybody in the right spot. Um, he's sort of a, a hidden gem if you haven't watched the Bobcats play much this year. Off the Cajun miss. Here's Davis. Jump pass into the corner to Adams, but doesn't take a three. Davis will. It's off. Bobcats 2 of 15 from beyond the arc here tonight. Harper. How about that step through from Tyler Harper? 42-38, Louisiana. Man, Harper is uber athletic. He's, he's a left-handed guard. He's going to be a phenomenal player for the Raging Cajuns as he continues to mature. I feel like he picked up his dribble at the top of the key. <laughs> this incredible length and athleticism shown by Harper. Sule the miss in transition. It's Butts for Louisiana and whistled for the travel. Let's go back to Tyler Harper. Let's see exactly when he took off. Just watch the long, lengthy strides here from Harper. The Euro step, the finish, and a timeout on the floor. Louisiana on top, 42 to 38. Looking to take game one of this weekend series in San Marcos. Again, one of the top shot blockers in the country has been Theo Akuba for Louisiana. And he has made his defensive presence felt again tonight. Two more blocks gives him 51 on the season. Look at Akuba's numbers here. He has 49 blocks, again, coming into this weekend series. That's more than some of these notable blue blood programs around the country. Yeah, he is such a dominator in the paint. And having that rim protector, again, as we've talked about at the top of the show, changes the things you can do on offense. Out of the call timeout by Texas State, Cajuns on top by four. Akuba again wearing the number 10. 
for Louisiana. That is significant because that num that jersey number had been retired for such a long time. It belongs to former All-American Dwight Bo Lamar. Lamar's jersey was retired in the 1970s, again brought out of retirement this year for Akuba. Now Lamar is the program's all-time leading scorer with more than 3,400 points. That is second most in NCAA history behind the great Pistol Pete Maravich. When I read those stats, Brent, that's a lot of points. Any time anytime. you're in a conversation with Pistol Pete, you did something well. Speaking of doing things well, how about Tyler Harper? A couple of really good-looking baskets, and Akub was loving it on the bench. Uh, he, he's going to be a great player for the Raging Cajuns again. Freshman came in, has only been in the program since December the 17th, and he's just going to get better and better for Coach Marlin and its staff. Nine minutes to go. Pretty tight second half. Cajuns led by seven at halftime. Bobcats took a brief lead. And now the Cajuns are on top. Shot clock down to seven. Bobcats have missed nine of the last ten shots. There's a bailout foul by Harper with a shot clock down to four. Really good job by Mason Harrell recognizing he had a lane, an alley to the basket, putting it on the deck against Harper and drawing the foul and getting a new 20-second shot clock for this possession. Now Adams finds Scott, picked up by Wilson. No Sule, no Small, no Asbury on the floor for Texas State. Where will the scoring come from? That's exactly what I was thinking, Brant. You know, you've got some guys who have been more role players. It's a tough shot there by Scott, but he knocked it down right there on the women's three-point line. That's a big bucket for the Bobcats. You ask a question, you get an answer pretty quick, don't you? Quinn Scott, as soon as the words came out of our mouths, drills the 20-footer. Russell gets it back from Richards. Got a whistle here, movie screen on the Cajuns. Two-point game in San Marcos, under eight to go. Today's Campus Spotlight features two of the theater buildings located on Texas State's campus, including the newest addition, the Performing Arts Center, a nearly 70,000 square foot facility that now serves as the front doors, if you will, at Texas State. The other is the Theater Center. It's one of the more iconic buildings in the city of San Marcos, known for its red facade, circular shape, and the man-made moat around it. 
Again, you can't miss the, those two buildings if you're at Texas State's campus. You definitely can't, Brandon. If you haven't gone and seen any of the fine arts perform, the, the musicals and the plays they have, I've been to many of them. Um, phenomenal. That's an understatement. Really good student performances, best you'll see around. Now, we asked another question. We got an answer earlier, right? The question of when would Caleb Asbury be reinserted into the game with his four personal fouls? We have our answer now. So Asbury playing with 7.36 to go. And with four personals, no more available at his disposal. Yeah, that's, that's early, but that shows the amount of trust that Coach TJ and the Bobcat staff have in Asbury that he can play this amount of time with those four personals. Off the pick and roll into Martin. Goes with the reverse and ties the game. How about Nate Martin? The reverse lay-in, and we're not at a 44 piece. He is going to be a special player for the Bobcats. He's growing up right before our eyes, Brant. Really good move knowing that Akuba was on that side when it pinned it against the glass. Great job by Nate Martin. Aaron Akuba flushes it down. Cajuns back on top. Louisiana basketball team known for its dunks. They had 34 in the season coming in. Akuba leads all Cajuns with 16. Now make it 17 for him at a two-point Cajun lead. Whistle here and a foul against Louisiana as a team six. So each team will be in the bonus following the next fouls in this game. And again, both teams are really digging in, playing tough on the defensive end. A little what I call cheap foul there by Harper. And as you said, it's going to make some free throw shooting be really pivotal down the stretch for both programs. Here's Davis off the Martin screen. Finds Adams. Tough shot. Short, well defended by Wilson. And then Adams call for the foul. So free throws coming up here for Louisiana. Theo Akuba. Again, really good defensively at the rim. Pretty good offensively at the rim, too. Yeah, it's, that's a pretty tough play to, to guard against there, Brand, is when you have the, the dunk by someone who is athletic and strong as a Cuba. You know, you wonder just how much that Coach Marlin's style, philosophy, what it's gotten out of a Cuba, because at Portland, when he played for the Pilots, was didn't really put up a lot of numbers. He comes to Louisiana. He's become a defensive force. He scores with regularity around the rim. He's a walking double-double, 11 points, 10 boards a game. And, again, Louisiana, the environment, the coaching, his teammates, whatever it is, has gotten the best out of him. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, you know, it is one of those things when players come into a program, they need to fit the system. And he definitely is a great fit for Coach Marlin's system at Louisiana. Wilson, good on both free throws. Four-point Cajun lead. Low-scoring game here in this weekend opener. Yeah, both teams are shooting okay. The Bobcats are shooting below their last few games. They're only, I think, around th they're at 37% versus the 50-plus we've been seeing from them. And the same thing with the Raging Cajuns. Both teams have really stepped up the defense. Bobcats get a handful of offensive rebounds. After another one, Asbury off on the three. This time, Akuba controls for Louisiana. The Bobcats hit every part of that rim that you could without it going in that last possession. Cajuns a careless turnover in transition. Asbury, quick trigger, won't fall. Rebound, Russell, and a foul against Texas State. You know, you would think pace of play, and the Cajuns would want to be up-tempo and get a game into the 70s and 80s. This is a low-scoring game, and Louisiana is holding its own. You'd think this pace would favor Texas State, but the Cajuns again on top by four and a chance to extend it with Cedric Russell at the foul line. Yeah, and fortunately for Caleb Asbury, the foul, they got it on Soule that last play because, as we've mentioned, Asbury has four. The next one, he's going to be sitting on the bench for the rest of the ball game. And, again, both teams are playing extremely hard. Texas State is... Got some really good looks the last few possessions, but just cannot get the ball to go down. Russell good on both. Louisiana has played in a number of tight games this season. They have been up to the task as well. 
They won the overtime game of the conference opener against Texas State, won by three this past Saturday against Arkansas State. Played Little Rock in a couple of tight games in Lafayette three weeks ago. In the corner, Adams. Passes on a three, lost it, but last touch by Wilson with nine to shoot. Yeah, Shelby can't let the ball stick in his hands over there. He got the ball and then dribbled in the same spot. He's got to continue to move the basketball to make the Raging Cajun defense work. Harrell into the corner. Adams this time pulls the trigger way off of the three. Here comes Louisiana. They have numbers. Inside, Wilson glides in but can't finish. Five minutes to go in a two-possession game. And again, Texas State is trying to get organized here on the offensive end. They've The Raging Cages have stymied the Texas State offense the last four to five minutes. Sule can't end the drought, but Adams gets the rebound. Bobcats are plus seven on the glass, but they trail by six. They're stuck on 44 points. Sule will go to the free throw line for two hard-earned foul shots. Game has, game has been pretty physical so far. It really has, and again, Texas State has hit everywhere on the rim, but falling in the last two and a half minutes, I think they, they have really struggled to find ways to score. And again, fortunately, this possession, Sule drew the foul and is going to get an opportunity at the free throw line. Again, there's nothing a matter with getting free throws. Those are easy freebies, or they should be, Brant. The last field goal the Bobcats made was the reverse layup by Nate Martin. That was about three minutes ago. They have missed eight straight shots since then. The Bobcats at 32% shooting. They were third of the conference in field goal percentage coming in. Sule one of two, it's a five point game. With four and a half to go, Sule will come out. Nate Martin is back in. Brayan Ayu and Isaiah Richards back in for Louisiana along with Duguay. Akuba is on the bench right now. And I, I think he may get a little more of a blow for until the under four, especially if the Raging Cajuns are going to continue to get buckets like that from Russell. Cedric Russell, 16 of the game. Seven-point Cajun lead. Four minutes and change left. Bobcats. Trying to get something going on offense. Small. Bounce pass taken away by Russell. Ninth Bobcat turnover. Russell working against Terrell. Yeah, Texas State, they've got under four now. They've got to lock in. Now they have to start getting stops, and on the other end, they have to find ways to score. Offensive foul against Russell. Bobcats get it back, but with work to do, they trail by seven in their home building. Wow. One of the more exciting players to watch in the Sunbelt Conference is Louisiana's Cedric Russell, the senior out of Alexandria, Louisiana. 
Again, he has had big games in this building before. 25 points a couple of seasons to go. 16 so far tonight leads all scores. Suzanne said it earlier, a player who can get to his shot inside and out. Yeah, he is definitely a player to watch. The thing that's fun to watch about Russell is his ability to read the ball screens. Again, there's a lot of ball screens within the Raging Cajun offense. He'll reject them, he'll use them sometimes, but he is crafty and can, and can skilled and can find multiple ways to score for the Raging Cajuns. Bobcats have the work cut out for them. Offensively challenged Friday afternoon, turning into the evening. 32% shooting. They trail by seven with three and a half left. Here's Harold and Asbury. Jump pass to Davis, puts up a three, puts it in. Three. Bobcats definitely need it back. Big shot by Marlon Davis. He's had some really great looks today at the bucket from the three-point line and hasn't had any to fall except for that one. Good move by Bobcats. Just a third made three of the game for Texas State. Here's Russell off the gay screen. Shot clock down at 10. Gay against Asbury. Had the ball stripped off his leg, and Texas State gets it back. Again, the Bobcats, their shooting has been off today, especially for the outside, but a timely three hit by Marlon Davis. It's a two-possession game with 2.45 to go. Harrell against Richards. And wants to take advantage here. Takes him off dribble. Makes the defense collapse, but cannot hit the floater. Had a pretty good look at it, just couldn't get it to fall. Texas State, the possession before, ran a little bit of a zone, trying to change things up. Ended up getting the turnover. They're back now to their patented man-to-man. -man. And again, they need to get stops if they want to be able to try to pull this game out. Gay into AU, shot clock to 10. Underneath, Richards finds a cutter. Gay lays it in. What a gorgeous play by Louisiana. A no-look bounce pass from Isaiah Richards, and the lead is up to six. Great play. It's a great cut by Gay. I mean, just read it perfectly. Got the easy, uncontested layup. Under two to go. Davis again for the outside. Yes. Big hit, Marlon Davis. Big answer. And the Bobcats call for time. Trailing 54-51 with a buck 45 left. This is going to be a barn burner. We got, like you mentioned, Rand, under two minutes left. Both teams are really staying on task. Bobcats have found their offense. They've got to find their defense to stay in this. We, we take you first to that bounce pass from Richards into Gay. Can't imagine he had a great line of sight there working against Nate Martin. Bob Castle got the answer from Marlon Davis on the three. Davis, two big threes in the past couple of offensive possessions for Texas State. It's a three-point Cajun lead with a minute 45 to go. What you're doing as coaches in both these timeouts, it's a two-minute two ball game. Basically, for two minutes, you've got to do what you're supposed to do on both the offensive and defensive end. Texas State, you see, is going to come out and stretch the defense okay, on the floor, so trying to see if they can get a mess up by the Raging Cajuns in the full court and then not have to guard them as long in the half court setting. Cajuns red hot from the floor as of late. Looking for some breathing room. Here's Harper. Back into Gay. Gay at the drop step. Works it back out to Russell. Cajuns in no hurry here. Want to use as much of the shot clock as they can. Russell in and out and back in. Cedric Russell, a cold-blooded three. Louisiana back in front by six on a ball that wanted to come out, but it goes back down. Really unbelievable shot by Russell. It shows you why he's one of the top perimeter players in the conference. Just one-on-one, -on -one, mono -y mono rises up the three-point line, and like you said, Brian, that thing came all the way out of the rim and then walked right back through. 57-51, Louisiana, with a minute 21 left. Tack on three more to that total for Russell. 
Now 19 in the game leads all scores. And again, if you're Texas State right now, your margin for error is razor thin. Offensive possession. They don't have to have a three at this point, but they have to get points. They've got to find a way to put some points on the board. And then once they do that, they've got to do a good job on the defensive end. I imagine you'll see some type of pressure full court from the Bobcats. Big possession here for Texas State. Down by six with a minute 20 to go. Here's Harrell, drives, Harrell, back out to Asbury. Cajuns good defense, oh. Asbury hammered on his way to the cup. And free throws coming up for Texas State. Big opportunity here for Caleb Asbury to score with the clock stopped. Yeah, and that, that's okay. This is a good possession for Texas State. They were able to get the ball, get the foul. Again, as you mentioned, Brant, you're scoring while the clock is not running. Now the flip side, you need Asbury to hit these two, then they've got to get a turnover, a defensive stop on the other end. 67% for the line this season. Asbury hits the first. The Bobcats as a team, eight of 13 for the line here tonight. Third worst foul shooting team with the Sun Belt coming into this weekend series. Good on both with 66 seconds to go. Adams will come in for defensive purposes as Asbury goes back to the bench. Yep. Coach TJ is doing an offense for defensive sub. You don't want Asbury to pick up that fourth foul, a fifth foul, because you want him to be available to do some three-point shooting for the Bobcats if it comes down crunch time. That ball, that pass at the bottom of the backboard, Akuba able to save it. The Bobcats in foul Akuba. Or was there a timeout call? I believe there was a timeout called by the coach from Louisiana Lafayette, which the coach tonight, as we've mentioned before in this broadcast, is not Coach Marlin, the legendary Raging Cajun coach, but Brock, Coach Brock Morris, I believe, is serving as the primary coach tonight. Again, these two West Division heavyweights will meet again tomorrow. They met early this season at Lafayette for two games. The first one was down to the wire. Bobcats were down by three late. Shelby Adams with just his third made three of the season. Sent the game into overtime, but again, the Cajuns pulled it out. Big game from Devin Butts, 22 for Louisiana. The season high for him as the Cajuns held off the Bobcats back in January 1st. Tip off for game two of this weekend series at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Also on ESPN Plus. Inbound to Akuba. Bobcats for the time being not electing to foul. And now that so much time has gone off, I say that. I thought the Bobcats were going to play for the stop. Instead, they foul Russell, a 77% free throw shooter. It's going to be a one and one. And again, for the Bobcat fans out there, you know, you've got a four-point differential, two-possession game, and again, it, he's you want Russell, if he hits both these, it's going to still be a two-possession game. Texas State's got to come down and quickly be able to get some points on the offensive end. If Russell makes a free throw here, it would give him his 12th career 20-point game, and more importantly, a five-point lead and accomplishes both. Second straight Friday, Russell has put up 20 or more. Lit up Arkansas State for 26 seven nights ago. Goes one of two. Again, the Cajuns looking to pick up their fourth straight win. Bobcats have a six game winning streak on life support right now. Down five with 40 seconds to go. Harrell, big shot, Mason Harrell for the top. And the Bobcats foul right away. And they foul Duguay, and that is the one player on the floor the Bobcats wanted to foul. Gay, a 56% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, really intelligent defense by the Bobcats. 
knowing the scout, remembering the scout, doing the things they're supposed to do immediately as soon as the ball went into Dugay, they knew that's who they wanted to foul. Really heads up play by Isaiah Small. Eight points, ten boards for game tonight, and this is the front end. The senior out of Senegal. And again, trying to take it back out to a two possession lead. Yep, and again, this is a big free throw again, Brant, because it is a two possession lead if he makes it. Texas State, if not, 33 seconds. You know, I think they're going to come down and try to get the best shot they can. I'm not necessarily going to, they're not necessarily going to take a three. Now you definitely got to have two possessions, so you got to get, you got to get points immediately. So Gang splits the two free throws. Four point Cajun lead, 33 seconds left. Harrell draws a foul from Harper. Harper with that tight defense. Harrell felt him, hesitated on his dribble. Smart play there by Harrell, knew a foul was looming. And only three seconds come off the clock with Harrell going to the free throw line for a chance to score a pair. Yeah, that's, that's just the inexperience of Harper understanding time and score. And um, you just, you can't do that. Not with 33 seconds left in the game. And uh, it's going to easily put Mason Harrell on the line to get two, to get possibly two points and have the Bobcats down to only one possession. Both teams now the double bonus. Harrell again, fifth best foul shooter in the Sun Belt, 82%. 4-5 tonight. We'll get one more and chance to slice this down to a two-point lead. And again, if Mason Harrell makes this, as you mentioned, Brand, it's a two-point game, 30 seconds left. You know, Texas State may opt to try to trap, see if they can get a turnover versus fouling immediately. We'll see what they've decided. They're going to foul immediately and make him hit free throws. And again, it's Dugay who they foul. And Gay again will go to the line for a pair. Two or four for the line so far tonight. Cajuns have two timeouts left. The Bobcats have one. And again, each team in the double bonus. And importantly, you see it there at the bottom, the possession error pointing in Texas State's favor if a play comes to that. And here's Gay, the first of two. Important one. Guarantees Louisiana a two-possession lead. And now looking for a little bit more breathing room with under 27 seconds to go. A double-double now for Duguay. And again, remember, Brent, he did not play in the first matchup. He's definitely making his impact known in this game. And he just hit two clutch free throws. Back out to a five-point lead. Bobcats can't waste much time. Harrell out to Small. Inside Martin. Can't flip it in. Rebound Asbury. Trying to draw a foul. Missing the three. Put back good for Martin as Coach Johnson calls for time with 10 seconds to go. He did. He's got the timeout. He's going to set up some type of pressure uh, full court. And again, as immediately when the ball comes in play, they're going to have to foul. They can try to reach for a tie-up, as you mentioned, Brent, because the possession arrow favors the Bobcats. But they've got to immediately get whoever gets the ball and foul. Again, Louisiana was picked to finish second in the Sun Belt's West Division. They sit in second place right now. The Bobcats, though, were not picked to, pick to finish, were not picked to win, rather, the West Division. They're picked to finish fifth. They sit atop the West Division standings as of today. Yeah, and I know when we talked early in the season to Coach TJ, you know, it was sort of the unknown. You know, you lose Coach Casper in the offseason. You have some new guys coming to the program. Just a lot of things, COVID turmoil, and not knowing how Texas State was going to weather that storm. And the Bobcats have weathered it quite well, Grant. Five and one at this point in league play, playing really good basketball. This first half tonight, they didn't shoot the ball well and got themselves in a little bit of a hole. Tonight, the first of, of a stretch in which the final 11 games for the Bobcats, eight of them will come at home. So to start five and one, huge for the Bobcats. Meanwhile, the Raging Cajuns again tonight playing without their head coach, Bob Marlin. Tested positive for COVID over the weekend. Did not make the trip to St. Marcus here tonight. And if Louisiana holds on to win, that would give him a milestone 200th victory 
as Cajun's head coach. 10 seconds left. AU, the inbounder, and the Russell, the Bobcats foul him right away. So Cedric Russell, a chance to assault this game away the free throw line with nine seconds left. Yeah, really def good defense by the Bobcats. They had limited the first two options to get the ball in, and Russell just streaked free to the corner. They were able to see him, get him the basketball, and there was no choice by the Bobcats, but you had to foul. And again, not the person that you'd want to see at the free throw line if you're a Bobcat fan. And that keeps the door ajar for Texas State. Well, they need one more miss from Russell here. There's something about our announcing jinx, Brant, that we have just the magic, I guess the magic touch, don't we? Russell now three of seven from the line. This for a player who's shooting 77% for the strike this season. Bobcats out of timeouts. Russell, clutch free throw there. Four point game, two possession lead, nine seconds left. In the Harrell. He's got to hurry. Harrell right to the rack, lays it in over Wilson with three seconds to go. Gay inbounds to Butts. Butts to the rim. No, he will not elect to take a shot. He'll dribble it out. And Louisiana has taken game one of this weekend series, 62 to 60. Man, this was a great ball game, Brant. Both these teams, you can tell why they're leading the West Division. Both teams clawed and fought throughout the entire game. It wasn't always pretty on the offensive end for both teams, but a heck of a ball game. And so now Louisiana up in the season series, two games to one. And with a win tomorrow, they can leapfrog Texas State and overtake first place in the Sun Belt's West Division. Big game for Cedric Russell, 21 for Louisiana. As the Cajuns pick up the win in St. Marcus, and the Bobcats will look to rebound tomorrow when these two meet for a 4 o'clock tip at Strand Arena. So for Suzanne Fox, I'm Brian Freeman saying so long from St. Marcus with the final score is Louisiana 62, Texas State 60. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. From Strand Arena, good night.